It's interesting to observe about Apple that they can bring out a new computer and all anybody talks about is the price of it and an interesting bit of machining on the grill. Now I read about the machining on Hackaday and that linked to this website here and if you click these frames it should take you direct to this particular page where somebody's done all the work to figure out how to machine these or how to design them anyway. Now the web page I showed you earlier um, assumes that you're going to use spheres to create to remove material. Unfortunately in Fusion 360, as far as I can tell and as far as Google can tell, it isn't possible to position spheres uh, accurately. You can create them as primitives, but there's no way to centre them on a feature or something. So anyway, to start off with I'm going to start by making a 100 by 100 millimeter square. Um, I want the middle in the middle, just for convenience later, so I did it this way. It would have been better at this point if those had been construction lines, as you'll see in a moment. We now extrude this square by, by 3mm, which is the thickness I'm using, and I had to select all four areas just to get the thickness I want, to get the profile I wanted. Extrude by 3mm, and we have a piece of generic material. Now create a sketch on one face and the underlying geometry is a triangle so I'll just draw a triangle using sketch geometry. There we have a simple triangle. Set the width of the bottom to be 6mm which is what I'm going to be using for the base length of the hexagons in this in this system. You'll see that this is called D5, and that's important later because this is going to be a variable and dimension which is used extensively further on in the modelling. You don't have to do it this way, but it's convenient if you can. So I now take two vertices of the equal triangle and draw a circle on each one. And this is because this is another way of doing it. When you can't get spheres to do the cut like we'd like to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do use circles and then revolve them to, to cut. Now that's one side. Then on the other side, I'm going to project the underlying picture, which isn't very really clear. There you go. So I'm projecting the previous sketch onto the underside. Now the alignment is such that the other circles on this side go in the centres of the triangles. So to get the centre, I'm putting in two bisectors and then a point at the intersection. So that point there is, the, is one circle and here's another line for another circle. I'll make this line parallel to uh, the, the, the first, first triangle edge and then make it equal in length to the other parallel of the other triangle edge. So there's no dimensions here. And again, put in two, put in two circles uh, of 5mm diameter. Now I shouldn't have done that, I should have typed in the diameter of the first circles and we'll see that later, or maybe no won't, but so I could there have typed in the D number of the previous circ first circle and then all the circles would be the same size, I just need to change one and they'll all change magically. What I'm doing here is picking the triangle itself and turning that into reference geometry or construction geometry so it doesn't become part of any profiles. So we now go to the timeline at the bottom, which I don't can you see that on screen? I'm not sure you can, I'm not sure you can see it on the on this where the screen is cut. Anyway, so I go to the first drawing, the first sketch. Oh, sorry, I'm showing here that that is D7. So that, sorry, so D5, I'm typing in there D5, so those two circles are now locked to the same size. Now here's the, the, the rotation axis. I've deliber deliberately put this off center. So that's specifically not touching any points to avoid auto snaps. And then I actively move it to be coincident with the whole centers. Then I trim off the excess of the circles. We now select the Revolve tool 
pick one semicircle in the chooser here and select cut so that as the option. I forgot to pick the, di the uh, profile, there we are, one semicircle profile. We have now a hemispherical cut through the material. Then do the same again, another revolve, but of course that's not working because we can't see the sketch. So I have to go back to the sketch tree, sketch tree, idiot. Pick the sketch, make that visible again, and now I can reuse that sketch for the next revolve. So pick the profile, pick the axis, do the, make it a cut, job's done. On that side, we now go to the other side, make the other sketch visible, or actually in this case I double clicked it in the timeline. I've not put the, 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 the axis in yet, so you get, there you see the line is way off center deliberately. I then go for coincident constraint. So I'll try again. Coincident constraint between that line and the whole centers. And that's to avoid any unwanted constraints which happen automatically. Then trim off the excess parts. Because I've got the triangle there, this is lots of little segments to remove. So we're now back to two semicircles and one axis. Select the revolve tool again. Pick one axis, pick one profile, pick an axis, choose cut, all good. Click OK. You can see the first little magic hole up here. Make the sketch visible again. Pick a circle, pick an axis. So it says new body, I didn't want that, so I've got to add in cut, and we're off, and some more holes appear. So we now have our, have our first set of holes, and what we need to do now is make them into a pattern. So we select pattern, a rectangular pattern, and pick one of them. We use feature as the pick choice at the top thing there. Specify the but we want spacing rather than extents, because space, that's important. The spacing needs to be D5. I've typed D1 there, I'll see my error soon. Make them symmetric, so we go both sent, both directions. And set the spacing on as now as D5, and that's worked this time. Having a long hard think. Now we want say 10 of those here. Again, for some reason this is an, an annoying tool and it keeps changing the selection box. You'll keep see this happen several times. Where I type D5 and the 5 ended up in, this, in distance. Now the spacing as shown in the website earlier is D5 times the square root of, of root 3. Oh sorry, square root of 3. So we don't have to calculate that, this, that can be done automatically in the box here. Which means that if we ever change D5 for a different triangle, base triangle, all the spaces will, will automatically adjust. So we now take the other circle, the other hemisphere on this side, and do the same thing again. So set it up, uh, set up the quantity, set up the spacing, which is D5 again, set up symmetric, Choose the quantity. Again, this is going to be d5 times square root of 3. Make it symmetric. Go here, try to change the number. Find that randomly the selection point has moved. Find that that's overwritten our spacing, which was a square root of 3. Go back. Enter once again d5 times the square root of 3, except I've typed d4 because I'm a fool. I will see my error eventually. It's not just red, yes, there you go. Type d5, that'll work. And there we go. So that's all the holes on one side. Off to the other side. Same again. Make a pattern. Pick a feature. I'm trying, to think, I'm trying to work out what the sort of contextual menu option there is and whether it's any better, but I don't know how to use that. So, set the spacing, 
set the so I've chosen the axis already. Set the spacing to D5. Set to symmetrical. Set the quantity to 15 or 10 in this case. Okay, I'll change my mind later. I'm sure. Set that to D5 times square root of three. Set to symmetrical. Adjust my quantity because there's too many to fit on this thing. Adjust the quantity here. Find that once again it's gone to the distance thing and overwritten. Go back there, type once more d5 times the square root of 3. I should report that, that's definitely a bug with the way that selection moves, moves spontaneously. Again, you've got the. I'm sure you can tell what's going on here. All the same again. Pick the, di pick the direction. If suppress is turned on, you can turn on and off individual holes. This is quite handy in rail parts. Uh, at the end of the video, I'll show you a rail part I've made with this pattern. And I did have to turn on and off certain holes because basically they were inaccessible and I didn't want the camera to try to do the job. And this time I forgot to choose the feature. And once you've choose the feature, everything goes back to zero. So I've just had to do it all over again, which is slightly frustrating. But not as frustrating as it would be doing with a pen and paper, let's be honest. So D5 times the square root of 3. It's very handy that you can type equations in, in the boxes here. It saves a lot of mathematics. No, it saves a lot of arithmetic. You'll see it's done it again. Jump from box to box without me wanting to, I think. I'll do it now. There you go. I go yeah. Type 14, I get the 4 in the spacing. Finally, click OK. And it gets complicated, it gets, has a, a long think here because there's quite a lot of geometry to, to solve. But there we are, this is basically the Mac Pro Grill. And it looks nicer in real life than it does in the model, actually. I wasn't content with just modeling this in CAD. I used the camera facilities in, in Fusion to machine from aluminium. And I made myself a rather stylish, I like to say, uh, Raspberry Pi Pro, shall we say, case. So this is my solid aluminium rasp uh, Raspberry Pi case.